Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please join me in prayer? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our text for today is the gospel reading read just a few moments ago. Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. This is our text. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord had crowds following him and he had a natural amphitheater there. So he goes out in the boat and he tells many things in parables. And we have one of those beautiful parables right in front of us. And the beauty of this parable for a preacher is that then he explains the parable and we can clearly see what it means. Which would mean then that my job as a preacher is probably pretty much done. Unless, unless there's something else that we need to notice. As we look, we see that there are different kinds of soil. And very often, we might get caught up in that whole thing of, well, if I'm this kind of soil, how do I become that kind of soil? And try to change the kind of soil that we are. Or we look at everybody around us and we say, oh, there's some thorny ground. Uh Uh-huh, right there on the path. Yep, see, there it goes. I don't think that's what the Lord intended for us. I think he's just making a statement about what really happens. When the word goes out, just as we heard in Isaiah, it does its work. The law convicts, and the gospel gives hope. The gospel nurtures, creates, and nurtures faith. It is very powerful and effective, that word of God. And it will do what the Lord sends it to do. Well, but pastor, how can you say that? Because not everybody believes. No. They are proven to be whatever kind of ground they are. That those who reject and continue to reject are rejectors. And we all do that at times. But notice that the seed isn't scattered based on whether they're going to hear it or not, whether they're going to become fruitful or not. The word is sown liberally, indiscriminately. Throw it here, throw it there. I mean, it's abundant. And there's no, well, this is a good little patch over here, and we'll sow some, and then maybe over there. No, it's scattered abroad. And the word does its work. There are those who reject who will continue to reject. But no matter where that word goes, notice the word is filled with life, just like that seed is filled with life. Wherever it goes, it sprouts and it does something. Everybody's got an opinion about Jesus, even if they don't believe in him. Jesus comes and a line is drawn and people are divided because you're either on one side or the other. Everybody's got an opinion about Jesus. No, I think we've got to look in this parable a little bit farther. We're not the seed and we're not the soil, perhaps. Perhaps we need to look at ourselves as the sower and see something totally new here. The seed, as I told the children, has life in it. How many of us make seed? None of us. It's given to us from the hand of God. The word is given to us by the very hand of God. He's the one who has handed down his word to us. So how are we to sow that word? How are we to spread that word? Well, liberally and indiscriminately, fully and abundantly. Well, but pastor, we can't do everything. That's right. We can't. And so sometimes we need to focus a little bit and recognize that one congregation can't save the whole world. But too often, we let that stop us. We can't do everything, so we do nothing. 
And that's not what this parable says either. No, this parable, I believe, is driving us today to look a little bit deeper into ourselves and our life as a congregation. The seed is all the same, filled with life, scattered abroad. Is there any reason why God should choose you over anybody else to give you the gift of faith and salvation? No. We're all dust. We're all frail and sinful, fragile and broken. As I've told you so many times, God knows you can't expect a lot from dust. But he scattered his seed. He has scattered the word abroad. And somebody shared with us the good news of God's love in Jesus. Somebody shared with us that we needed a Savior and that God sent a Savior so that he could be with us and we with him throughout our life here. But then we've got so much to look forward to. Somebody told you the message. The seed was scattered and it took root. It landed in your heart and it produced faith. And that faith produces the fruit of works. And the life that was in that seed is shown in the life that is put out. It's a marvelous, wonderful thing. But is that only given for us and only for here in these walls and then going home? No. No, the word has to be much more liberally spread than that. It has to be with great abundance cast about. It's never just for you. It will always affect the people around you. And while you may not be able to change the world, you can have an influence on your environment wherever you are found. You can have an influence there. You can bring the life of Jesus there. Oh, but pastor, you know, I work for the government and we're not supposed to talk about God. I teach in a public classroom and I can't preach about Jesus. No, but your life can show that you trust, can't it? And when you're not in class, you can talk about it then, can't you? There are opportunities and our faith is to shine always. People are supposed to look to the people of God and see that something's different. We don't follow in the ways of the world. We don't follow in the ways of the flesh. But rather there is something new and alive within us. There's a new way of seeing things. A new optimism and a certain absolute hope grounded in the cross of Jesus Christ. That my future is not about everything I do. But about all that my God has done for me. That my eternity is all caught up in who I am as God's child. Because he claimed me, and he sent the Savior for me, and he says, I love you, I forgive you, you are mine, never will I leave you nor forsake you. I may wander away, but his claim on me does not go away, and he will pursue me always. And it is no different for you, my friends. He has given us that word, not only that we might have life, but that we may go out of this place. Yes, we come here week after week after week in order to hear again the same thing, the same basic message. God is love. He has mercy on you in Jesus. We win. There you go. But is it just for us to come when we're feeling a little weak? Or do we need to hear it? even when we don't think we need to hear it. You see, there's something that not everybody knows about that we Lutherans do. We have that liturgy that we repeat over and over, and we may change it up a little bit here and there, but we do the same thing basically every day, every week, don't we? So that it is traced into our hearts and our minds. And without a book... In a moment of crisis, those words can leap to our memory and we remember, I believe in God the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ. We remember the passages of scripture that are taught to us. We remember the words that we hear over and over and over again so that we don't have to stand there like deer in the headlights. 
we have something to grab hold on. And it's traced in our hearts so that it continues to make a difference in our lives. Because the word of God, which the liturgy is mostly God's word, just spoken responsively back and forth, that it has an effect within us. And Why do we always use the same versions of everything? Well, you'll notice that we don't always. You haven't been here yet when we use the Nicene Creed. We don't use the one everybody else uses. We use the one the rest of Christendom uses. Why do we do these same words over and over? So that they become a part of our whole being. I remember a couple of years ago standing at the back of the church for the confession and noticing a little girl, couldn't have been over two years old, not reading much yet, standing up in the pew, looking at the cross, reciting the confession of sins with the rest of us. And the little heartstrings got tugged, and I had to brush away a little bit of moisture. It was like, yes, it's a part of her life. And it was not long ago we had a visitor to our church, a gentleman who I think probably struggles. I'm not sure that he could probably even read, but he had been here before. And you could tell because he started to join in with the confession. And he'd get so far and then he'd stumble and then he'd pick right up again. And it was doing its work. It was becoming a part of who he was. And he was able to follow along with those great words and to hear that word of forgiveness. Yes, we do the same thing over and over again. That it may be traced on our hearts and our minds. But is it just for us? Or does it have to go out? It has to go out. What is the purpose for Calvary Lutheran Church and school? Just to nurture a few? Or to cast light in the darkness? To take the seed of the word of God and scatter it abroad in words and deeds? It is that we may be going out, right? Right? And doing this work of God and spreading this good news. Maybe, maybe someone will hear it who's never heard it. That's the purpose. Maybe someone who has fallen away will hear it and come back. Wow, how awesome is that? Maybe you will get a new understanding as you share that word with someone else. I think it's time for us as we have come to this new place in our history. Didn't even know that thing was on. As we've come to this new place in our history, where we're at the place that we've been building toward, and we've put in place a dream team of an associate pastor and a principal and a great staff, and everything is right there, maybe it's time for us to think again about the possibilities rather than wasting so many opportunities. So much potential is lost when we give it no thought. So it's time for us, I believe, each one of us, to think again about all of the blessings that we have in our life and how God does indeed give his blessings fully, abundantly, liberally, indiscriminately to each one of us. And will he continue to bless you if you let go of the seed in your hand? Sure he will. There's always more where that came from. Yeah, he's a God of abundance. We think scarcity. He thinks abundance. He will always be able to provide. But not just us as individuals. As individuals gathered to together as a congregation, we can do much more than as just individuals. And as a congregation, what are the assets that we have? A few years ago, Luther Snow came and helped us to figure out what the assets were that we had. Right down to, well, we have a kitchen with a big stove and a couple of ovens. How could we maybe use that? How can everything that he's given us somehow be put into the purpose of spreading the good news in word and deed? That's where we got to think. Well, I don't know, Pastor. I'm just not that creative. I can't come up with those ideas. Well, maybe not that you think, but I'll guarantee there are some ideas there. And take a look around you. You can do that. Go ahead. Take a look around you. Good for you. See all those people? 
they have a creative mind as well. And sometimes as we share and discuss, things come to light and new ideas come up. And it's an opportunity for us to launch out and start something new. Pastor, we can't do everything. Yeah, you're right, we can't. There are some limitations. For example, because we have little children in this building five days of the week, we are not able to open this church for anybody to come in off the street to pray unless we put a keypad and a lock on this door. And then we would have to do so before the cafeteria downstairs so that people can't just sneak into the school and do whatever they want to do. But maybe, maybe a handful of people will say, you know, we could open this place up during the week and we could do this and that and the other. And you know, we're going to be able to do that because we're going to put those keypads on and we're going to make it safe for those children. Now, sometimes we stop ourselves. If you've ever been to a leadership meeting, you know how it goes. We start off with a devotion and the next thing we hear is, well, folks, we don't have any money. Offerings are down. Yeah, I saw that. So all the air gets taken out of everybody's sails. And it's hard to think about what we could possibly do because we've already heard that we can't. So we've moved the treasurer's report to the end of the meeting. And we talk about ministry and ideas at the beginning. And then we'll ask God how to accomplish them. That's the way you got to do it. Think and dream big. And if it's something that you can accomplish on your own, you're not dreaming big enough. You've got to dream big enough that only God can make that happen. And you know what? He has. Time and time again. There may be times when we come up with ideas that won't work. Not every idea is good. Or maybe it's good just not for this place or this time. But you know what? we got to talk about those things. Oh. Well, we only see each other for an hour. Two if we're in Bible class. Yeah. What about outside of church? Do you talk about church and the message outside of church? You know, I'm only 55 still. For as long as I possibly can be. And... I've met a lot of people from a number of different religious walks. And you know, I'm amazed at how many Baptists and non-denominationals and those will talk about what they hear on Sunday and Wednesday. They go to church more than just Sunday morning. You know, that reminds me of what the preacher said on Sunday. He was a... And sometimes I even hear my Catholic brothers and sisters say, you know, Father told us, blah, 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 blah. How often have you heard Lutherans talk that way? We can be the quietest bunch of folks. We need to be talking it up. We're not up here just blowing wind for our own sake. We need to be taking this and talking with one another. We need to be taking it out into the world. We need to be seeing by the power of the Holy Spirit all that God can possibly do. And then pray for the courage and the ability to latch on and to go with it. Lord, lead us into the future you have in store for us. We must talk about these things and dream big because we are so, so blessed. God does everything with an abundance. Remember last week, I said it, I'll say it again this week. You sin this much, he gives you this much forgiveness. There's always more grace than you can contain or use. Don't doubt him. And stop doubting yourself. You are the children of God. He gives you the seed of his word. And he sends you with his own spirit to scatter that word abroad in words and deeds. And the impossible is possible when he is in the midst of it. So let's look to the future, folks. Let's rejoice in everything that he's given us. And let's ask him to lead us and show us the possibilities and to take us there. Because you know what? At the moment that our first parents sinned, it seemed like life was a long ways away. But the Lord promised he would bring life and he did in his son. We may be in the midst of difficult times. Offerings may be down and we have no money. But you know what? 
When we trust the Lord, I guarantee you something will move somewhere. Because he who moved the stone that Easter morning still moves stones on folks' hearts. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.